Yeah, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, welcome to this PG Diploma course of Wild <coughs> Wildlife Diploma course of from the IGNO. So I'm Dr. Suresh Patel. Uh, I'm Associate Professor in Veterinary College. I'm teaching medicine. So we had a course of veterinary jurisprudence in this. We deal with the animal laws as well as the uh, 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 cruelties done to the animals regarding those things. So uh, today I am dealing with the uh, third part of these things that is the animal welfare laws, policies and organization in that I have been assigned the blocks 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So today the MAW003 course I am going to take the first block that is animal welfare laws in that let me tell you the animal welfare laws let, let us have an overview of the animal welfare laws Slides are not moving. Sir Shanmukhan, sir, slides are not moving. Yeah, animal protection laws. In this, we will deal with the animal rights, the suffering, the cruelty to the animals. What are the laws? What are the animal welfare things that are been there? So, the first topic for this is the laws that are being made for the animals and overview. So, in this, a great <clears throat> Proverb from Excuse the Martin me, Luther King Jr. Excuse me, sir. It is not in PowerPoint. Uh, I mean, slideshow mode. Yeah, yeah. Sir. Yeah, pardon? Sir, it is not in the slideshow mode, sir. Now? Now mm, it is? I could see it. In, uh, is it now in the slide mode? Uh, no, sir. No, madam. Uh, sir, uh, I could see it in the original mode only. It is not in the slideshow mode. No problem, sir. We will continue, please. Okay, now? Uh, it is uh, the same, sir. No problem, sir. The slides are moving. No problem. Okay, okay. So today is the first class. Maybe by the next classes, we may get improved. Okay. So here, the great <coughs> King Martin Luther has said, it may be true that the laws cannot change the heart, but it can restrain the heartless. So that's why in any kind of civilized society, the laws are being made. So regarding the animal welfare laws, the animal welfare laws, uh, one must take into account the background regarding this thing is that the as the human requires both kind of the laws, whereas the some animals, a uh, lot of abusement, cruelty, and there, there are some kind of the injuries or injustice done to the animals. So, the different countries have adopted different legislations and these laws and legislations varies from country to country. 
some of the countries that have strictly developed this are the australia switzerland united kingdom germany netherlands and denmark and among these thing the japan is the one country which is uh, modified the laws uh, according to his own so the australia some of the welfare laws in some of the countries let us uh, take into consideration some of the histories the australia has given importance to the animals and human life whereas it has given equal importance both for human lives as well as for the animal lives whereas the switzerland the first country switzerland yeah is the first country to protect the animal's dignity <coughs> and united kingdom its strictures penalties against the cruelty and negligence for the animals whereas in germany it gives the constitutional protection for the animals so uh, that equal constitution has been given for the protection against the animal whereas uh, netherlands has banned the use of the experiments on the animal as well as it has banned on the use of the testing of the cosmetics on the animals so denmark has prohibited the live slaughtering of the animals so whatever the slaughters have to be done it has to be done in a closed circuit only so like that uh, the other countries india has also several laws for protection and welfare of the domestic animals and wildlife so when it comes to the animal welfare laws in india let us go into the history so first question comes into everybody's mind is that when did the animal welfare law come into existence in india you may be surprised to know that since this uh, animal welfare laws has been given importance since the ancient vedic period so in this the main ideology was the non violence to all the living creatures including the animals so india has been a tradition for several uh, homes and the culture advocating the non violence and compassionate towards animal so time and again the rules has been modified and the india uh, the basic principle regarding is the compassionate towards animal and educating the non violence the so the source of the whatever the legislations that has been made in india are either based on the international conventions or on the western philosophies for the prevention of cruelty to the animals so the animal protection in the indian legal system the whole matrix is been summarized into three dimensions so the broadly it has been classified into three dimensions the animal laws for the protection in the legal system first is the origin that is the animals are protected for the betterment of the agriculture which leads to animal husbandry and the development is primarily to focus on the farm animals so every state has got the responsibility of protecting these animals and different legislations are been uh, passed and the as per the indian penal code the penalties are also there so the first type is that as per the article 48 of the indian constitution it enacts the acts like cattle protection so the constitution of india article 48 nowadays is giving getting more prominence because of one thing that is prohibition of the slaughter of cows and calves so different countries have adopt sorry different states have adopted under the article 48 the prohibition of the slaughter of the cows and calves so here the second time second type which is the animal protection is the part of the preservation and conservation so in this mainly the international conventions or treaties during the 1940s the primarily the one and another things before the independence era of india the there was the animal protection laws were modified and they were adopted when it comes to india in 1970s indian judiciary played a very important role in the protection of the wild animals and bird as a part of preservation of the biodiversity so as per the article 48 here amendments were done article 48a and article 51a in that sub clause g here the in this the the animal protection part was included and the third type of the animal protection is purely based on the welfare ethics and morality and this is the oldest form of animal rights so uh, under the seventh schedule so this has been included in the 17th 
concurrent list of the constitution of india so when it comes to animal welfare so you can see this picture where you can see that one, this is the coin which has been received that means in the old era in the vedic period this is the evidence where we can show that animal welfare measures were taken so coming to the animal welfare organizations in india in india animal welfare organization comes under the ministry of environment and forest government of india and in this the prevention of cruelty to animal act 1960 which is still today it's a pioneer act is there under this two strategy organizations have uh, established one is the animal welfare board of india awbi which you all commonly know that and much of the people they are not aware is another is the committee for the purpose of supervision and control of the experiments of animal cp all the interpret here sir yes hello. cp csea hello uh, sir prevention of cruelty to animal act is presently under the ministry of fisheries animal husbandry and dairy not under the ministry of environment forest okay okay, okay. the mandate of the animal welfare division is to prevent the inflicting so necessary pain or sufferings of the animal so the awbi is primarily related with animal welfare and the cpcsea which is supervising the experiments that are conducted mainly in the post graduation studies in the veterinary colleges in the uh, in science uh, colleges in the medical professions and the other places where it there so cpca over the past decade in the few years they are taking uh, extreme measures for cruelty against animals so coming to the another continuation part of the animal welfare here you can see that the cows were been seen as worship from the indus valley civilization samrat ashok provided water through and the uh, he has established some kind of the waters to be given during the uh, for the animals during the summer or uh, other types also and here also lay down the prohibits the hunting of the wild animals so it was restricted during the samrat ashok period only so in 1980 1882 the british mp uh, member of parliament richard martin uh, introduced a bill offering the protection from cruelty to the animal and like this in the world the first the spca was established in britain and the queen victoria in 1840 recognized this spca and this is the scenario when it comes to as we were been ruled by the britishers most of the time so these laws were not that much fully functional but in 1960 the india enforced the prevention of cruelty act 1960 and apart from that three more laws were there 1972 wildlife protection act was there so the base of this 1960 and 1972 laws were on the five freedoms that were mandated for the farm animals so the five principles that were taken into account are the freedom from thirst and animal freedom from discomfort freedom from pain and injury and disease freedom to express the normal behavior freedom from fear and distress yeah so Uh, regarding the history of the animal prevention of cruelty act most of the we might know that 1960 the act was passed so lot of efforts was taken the so the entire credit of this prevention to cruelty act or animal welfare board goes to rukmini devi who was the member of the rajya sabha and she was the first person uh, chairperson of the animal welfare board of india from 1962 to till 1986 but uh, when she introduced this bill on the 5th march 1953 she introduced the bill in the on the floor of the rajya sabha entitled the prevention of cruelty to animals bill 1953 uh, but the bill couldn't was not moved because due to some technical reasons the technical reasons were uh, that the mainly related to the definitions mainly related to a committee so subcommittee was been formed and the bill was withdrawn and a committee was formed to examine the bills uh, which under which uh, the the member of parliaments were uh, some of them were formed into the committee and but uh, referring to the animal slaughters 
Rukmini Devi has told in the floor of the house that they are the living hells. Uh, and also she has seen that she has, over a, power, over a period of years, she has visited so many of the slaughterhouses, research laboratory, vaccine institution, veterinary hospitals, cattle markets. And there she found that these some knowingly or unknowingly, some cruelties are being done to the animals. And she rightly pointed those. And in that, the legislation was formed. Based on the four issues, these recommendations, the uh, Prevention of Cruelty Act was finalized. Those are the scientific and medical research, veterinary treatment, dry tea requirement of population, and modern methods of slaughter of animals. So these were the four things that was taken into consideration earlier also in 1890 when uh, the other countries they have adopted. So like India also, the Animal Welfare Board of India was established in 1962 under the Act uh, and it was uh, functioning under the Ministry of Environment and Forest. The presently, its headquarters in Chennai. The board has got 28 members appointed by the Government of India. The Animal Welfare Board receives fund as per the budget provisions made in the each five years plan. The Animal Welfare Board of India is as gives recognition to all the animal welfare organizations that are prevalent in our country presently. So separately, we will have Animal Welfare Board of India regarding the other so many uh, welfare boards that will come on to in the next classes. Today, as a part of history, we will just only go through some of the things. So what are these in the, the schemes that are being implemented by Animal Welfare Board is that it, it, gave, it ensures the immediate attention to the sick or injured or distressed animal. So for this thing, they have providing the ambulance services to the animal that are in distress and also the animals that have faced accident or they are suffering from diseases. So, so many ambulances are being provided by the AWBI. Now, the presently, some of the progressive states like Gujarat, Karnataka, Maharashtra and uh, many more states are coming out with the ambulance services. So, the uniform number is 1962. 1962 is the number from that GPS will be connected. So any phone call to that, the, the these ambulatory services are there for the sick, injured and distressed animal. Then also the, uh, the grants are being given by for the AWBA for the control of the ABC program, that is animal birth control program. This has been primarily done in the metropolitan cities and these are being operated through the NGOs and the SPCS, they are giving financial assistance. This is the earlier 370 rupees, but presently it has been in some strategies, it varies from 500 to 700 rupees for pre and post operative care and catching it is 100 to 150 rupees for catching and reallocation. It depends upon the tender which they are giving, but primarily the pre and post operative care are being taken care and the, the dogs that have been caught out for uh, they have been done sterilization they are been written back to the original places so another is that the, any kind of and uh, this awbi doing is that any kind of calamities or any kind of unforeseen circumstances like the cyclone or any draft or any earthquake is there where the animal life is to be protected whenever such kind of natural calamities case uh, comes the main focus is for the human risk human protection and resources. So the AWBI along with the national NDRF team, they will go and they will see the relief operations for the animals. Then apart from that animal shelter homes are being uh, constructed here uh, in the many of the places for this, the financial assistance has been given. It varies from state to state. And these are some of the budgets that has been given for the shelter ambulance services uh, regard in the 11th five year plan for the animal welfare. So this is the model. Uh, primarily what they have done is that this animal welfare board of India has this UGC has banned the dissection of the animals in zoology labs for the experiment. So we can see that those who are in the 50s now they can see that they can remember in their in their while uh, when they were in the 12th standard or 10th standard, they used to have a practical on the cockroaches or on the frog. Nowadays, everything has been banned. 
so in that the alternative methods are being implemented so like this the uh, another innovative things are that using of the rubber mats in case of dairy animals were been uh, introduced the purpose is that the animal should not get have injury and it should not have laminitis and to quite extent it will prevent the mastitis in some of the belief is that when the animal is not distressed or animal is not having any kind of disturbances the more milk yield will be there so the suc success implementation of abc are been done in various states and also they have laid down the um, so many uh, guidelines regarding the pet shop and also one of the another historic thing what this animal welfare board of has gone is the dogs participation of the dogs are disqualified which which have undergone the docking and even ear cropping also ear cropping and docking both have been disqualified uh, in the participate such type of dogs are participated in the dog show so uh, the curriculums are being in introduced for the children's in this in these things they are been uh, allowed to go to the nearby zoos and renowned animal activist and uh, they are taking part on all those things so these are the animal welfare board constitution ex officio members are there animal husbandry commissioner will be there so detail regarding these things we will go through in the next classes when we are going through the animal welfare but broadly animal welfare association here you can see that under the awi the lot of other blue cross of india blue cross of hyderabad peoples for animals wildlife institution of india bombay spca madras spca kolkata spca these all are coming under this thing that peta is there animal right wing they are all under the animal welfare association and just to take the glimpse of this thing the bill was passed on the 12th of december 1960 in that the definition of animal was introduced that means any living creature other than a human being so it was and that along with that domestic animal the definition of domestic animal was that that means any animal which is tamed or which has been or is been sufficiently tamed to serve some purpose for the use of a man or which is either has been or not uh, intended to be tamed that means it is to be domesticated mainly for the purpose for the use of the man so such was the such is the definition that has been included in this act so this is the wonderful one should hats off to the creator for this uh, picture here the 15 india's laws which are been very nicely depicted all and in the as i cannot uh, make the wide of this picture but you can see that in this the whatever the punishment that has been cruelty has been done to the animals they all the act has been the articles are been under the ipc section under the pac act 1960 the different sections are there and also the different penalties are been given these are in small letters you may not see it visibly but this is a wonderful picture you can get it in the internet also and this picture will give so in most of the institution nowadays in the dc office in the uh, in the veterinary colleges everybody is using this picture so which is that as a every law uh, abiding citizen one must know that animal 15 animal laws there are prevalent now coming to the uh, animal prevention cruelty act and this the important legislations along with this thing along with the 1960 act so many other legislation uh, acts were passed in subsequent years the first among that notable was the draft and packed animal rules 1965 licensing of the farrier's rule 1965 performing animals rules 1973 registration of cattle premises rule 1978 application of the fines rules 1978 transportation of animal uh, 1978 here it is transportation of animal rules on foot and then it was really amended in 2009 by various other Uh, modes of transportation then breeding of experiments on animals 1998 then establishment and regulation of the spcas rules 2001 performing animal that is registration of the animals as 2001 and it was amended in 2002 then animal slaughterhouse 2001 transportation of animal on foots 2001 these are the subsequent laws that have been passed in the parliament 
then abc animal birth control dog rules 2001 and its amendment rules the dog breeding and marketing rules recently 2017 care and maintenance of the case property animal rules 2017 then the prevention of cruelty to animal egg laying hence recently it has been there regarding uh, 2019 it is there and biodiversity act 2002 so, so these are some of the laws that are been passed apart from the 1960 prevention to cruelty act so but prevention to cruelty act 1960 is the first act that has been provision that has been made so some specific states have adopted the different as per the article 48 and 48 a they have adopted different so that is goa daman and diu disease act 1974 restricted to goa daman and these all acts whatever this thing is there that is you are seeing on the slides all they can all the copies of this act you can pdf copies you can get it in the internet if you go through that the persons who are from the respective states they can go this thing they can see in that particular act so many uh, the control measures diseases the culling procedures everything has been included so <coughs> he as far as i am from the karnataka state here the karnataka animal disease control act 1961 is there karnataka disease control rules 1967 and the livestock importation amendment act 2001 is there and apart from these things the karnataka poultry and livestock feed order is there of 1987 and for the all north eastern seven states the assam cattle disease act 1948 is still prevalent so the animal protection laws what are the animal protection laws in general what where we can uh, go through animal uh, rights in india as we are all aware so it is a fundamental duty of every citizen of india to have compassionate for all the living creatures so it comes under the article 51a sub clause g so it will be the duty of the every citizen to have compassion for all the living creatures so if this this one should always remember as the pga uh, daw students one must remember this is the pioneer article 51 ag one should always remember then apart from that you can see that there are different kind of cruelties are been done that is uh, on the stray animals under the indian penal code section 428 and 429 that is in this section the animals which is value of less than 10 rupees or more than 10 rupees value animals if some kind of cruelties are there under the ipc sections different punishments are been imposed even for abandoning of any animal for any reasons you can land into prison for 3 months under the prevention of cruelty act 1960s uh, section 11 one i the cruelty done to any or abandoning any animal can lead to imprisonment of 3 years then no animals including chickens can be slaughtered in any of the places other than the slaughterhouse so slaughterhouse uh, rules safety of this uh, the, the prevention of cruelty act slaughterhouse rules recently in 2001 they have amended as per this thing sick animals pregnant animals sh shall not be slaughtered and also a separate slaughterhouse should be there the slaughterhouse should have its own minimum standards hygiene should be maintained then the uh, stray dogs shall not be operated for the uh, that has operated for the birth control cannot be captured or they have to be rehabilitated regarding this thing abc rules 2001 number of court decisions are been there in different high court from kolkata uh mumbai high court delhi high court there have been there so many animal welfare activities they are fighting for this thing because some of the uh, in the, in some of the localities or some of the uh, areas residential areas some people are objecting to the dogs because of the ferocious uh, activities or because of the uh, barking or some kind of nonsense been created by the dogs so they are uh, <coughs> requesting the dogs to be Uh, done for the euthanasia some are uh, advising for the uh, culling of the dogs or some of the using so the municipality authorities under the abc rules they are uh, catching hold of such dog dogs 
under the for animal welfare board of india the they are doing the sterilization they are doing the spay they are doing the family planning operations for these dogs and after the post operative care the dogs are been relocated in the same area now the question arises why the the dogs has to be uh, they cannot be uh, <clears throat> relocated in some other places because as the dogs are being familiar to that place they are known to that place so it is always better to re relocate the dogs in that uh, particular area only then neglecting an animal or defining the sufficient food shelter or exercise or keeping the animal in some kind of confinement or putting some huge chains for long hours is a punishment or fine which can lead up to a imprisonment of 3 months or both so it is under the section under the prevention of cruelty act 1960 section 11 1h so most of the section are pca act are under the section 11 only the sub section 1 2 3 4 or a b c d is differing so one must remember those things that what are the previously slides i have shown you in the picture so that will be there then under the wildlife protection act the monkeys are protected and they cannot be display now earlier you can see in the hindi movies or in some kind of movies you can see that the la, these uh, monkeys were been used in lot of movies for the entertainment purpose like that bears were there lions all these things now they have been under the performing act rules 2001 and 2017 these are all been uh, totally uh, they are not been un, uh, prohibited and they are been if at all they have been used certain guidelines are been issued by under this act so they has to follow that thing only uh, in this the wildlife protection act the monkeys especially this picture shows that these monkeys are been used for the experimental purpose their so brutality will be brutally they are been uh, subjected to some kind of cruelties so here <clears throat> the bears monkeys tiger panther lions the bulls they are been prohibited from been trained and used for entertainment purpose either in circus or street as per the prevention of cruelty act 1960 so these are the animals they are been uh, prohibited from entertainment purpose so here the entertainment purpose means uh, wherever you pay the money and you uh, go either it may be on the circus or it may be in some function so that is where the entertainment purpose the animals are been exhibited and for that thing the money is been taken so that under this uh, section 22 it is been prohibited then animal sacrifice is illegal in every part of country as per the slaughter rules 2001 but unfortunately still today as we are having some some still some superstitious is there some religious belief is there still animal sacrifices are been done but what over a period of time now they it has drastically reduced lot of awareness has been created with the people across the country towards the so many of the speci uh, specifically related to some <clears throat> communities where uh, the education has been done regarding the uh, illegal sacrifice done to the animals and all those things so to the the number has drastically reduced then another is the organizing or participating or instigating any animal for fight is a uh, cognizable offense so here this as per the pca act here animal instigation or fight is there like in karnataka kambala is there in uh, tamil nadu jellykattu is there and they have been now they have been exempted but i am telling you but still bull fights are been organized this uh, ram fight are been organized so organizing or participating or instigating an animal some cock fights are been done so they are all prohibited and it is a cognizable offense so even the cosmetic testing on animals and in impounds or cosmetic testing on animal is banned as per the rules uh, 1948 c and 135b of the drugs and cosmetic rules 1945 the uh, the <coughs> pro the some of the compounds that are been used on the testing of the animals laboratory animals is been prohibited then capturing trapping or poisoning or baiting of any wild animal is a punishment under the wildlife protection act 1960 
here the fine is 25,000 or an imprisonment up to seven years or both. So it is a detail in the next Sunday class, we will go through the Wildlife Protection Act where we will see the uh, details of this act. But in this act broadly for any kind of capturing, poisoning or any kind of attempting any kind of baiting to the any wild animals is punishable in the law with a fine up to 25,000 or imprisonment up to seven years. Then also apart from that, even the destroying the eggs of the uh, eggs or nest of the birds, reptiles or chopping of a tree that is having the nest of such birds. It is also uh, attempting <coughs> to a punishment of 25,000 or imprisonment up to seven years or both. So as per the Wildlife Protection Act, Section 9, so this also is amount to cruelty to the animal and a heavy punishment has been imposed on this thing. Then also apart from that, if carrying the animals uh, in any vehicle which is causing discomfort or which is having suffering, it is also punishable under two central laws. First is the under the Prevention of Cruelty, uh, Prevention of Transportation Animal Act 2001 and the Motor Vehicle Acts 1978. It's a general law. So, but the if the animals are being carried over uh, more than its capacity or their discomfort is there to the animal or they are being uh, <coughs> traveled in, in a cruel manner, then as it is punishable under the two central acts. Even under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972, if in the zoo or in sanctuaries, if teasing, feeding or disturbing the animal in the zoo, there is an, uh, it is considered as an offense and a fine of 25,000 or imprisonment up to three years is been enacted. So apart from that, see, that's why nowadays, in spite of this fan, um, the, the fines and all those things, they, they still some of the uh, the persons, they mischiefly, unknowingly, they do it and that is causing distress to animals. So nowadays, the Zoo Authority of India has taken that the, the, the animal enclosures, there should be some distance and a wire fencing or the <coughs> there should be some barricade so that the persons who are visiting the zoo, they are not easily accessible to the animals and such type of disturbances to the animals is minimized. Now, uh, some of the terminology that are being used in the laws, several terms has been used in the law, but as uh, related to this course, so let us discuss some of the things and a uh, few things let us understand what is mean by cognizable offense, what is mean by non-cognizable offense and what is mean by summon and what is mean by oath. So here cognizable offense means here a police may arrest without any warrant. So as per the Criminal Procedure Act 1973, see cognizable offense means any person can be arrested without warrant. So the examples like it, it, it should be a serious in nature like murder, robbery, theft, writing. But here in the Animal Cruelty Acts, very few cognizable offenses are there. Like uh, uh, if any animal is being brutally injured, or any kind of uh, the doom fuka or a bastility or any kind of the injuries are being done to animal, then the cognizable offense are there. But most of the, uh, under the Prevention of Cruelty Act, they are the under the non-cognizable offenses. So let us understand which are the offenses that comes under the cognizable offenses. So the cognizable offenses is that under the section 11, 1, here, it mutilates any animal or any animals, stray dogs, killing of these stray dogs by the method of uh, cruel manner, like injecting with stetnine injection. Some of the persons, they will uh, do some kind of killing the animals, even with rat poisoning, with uh, uh, inhuman manner, or uh, doing injuries by giving stetnine injury directly into the heart. So such kind of unnecessary cruel manner amounts to the violation and the person can be arrested under the cognizable offense. Then another is the 
on section 111 n in this the organizers who are keeping the animal for fighting and they are receiving money from for such kind of uh, fights and they are causing any injury to the animals so such also they can be booked under the cognizable offense then another is the any shooting competition or who promotes the shooting or the animals are been you are been uh, used or they have been released for the captive purpose of shooting so such type of offenses are under the cognizable offenses and uh, without any warrant the police can uh, book the person or you can arrest the person the nature of the offense and the section violated if any per any person performs the uh, fuka or dum fuka upon the any cow or any including giving any kind of oxytocin injection to the milking animals that is milking animal to give more milk and by giving this oxytocin injection it can be injurious to the health so under the section 12 it is also comes under the cognizable offense now some of, some of the non uh, veterinary background they might be not knowing what is fuka or dum fuka actually dum fuka or fuka is a process of introducing air or any substances into the female organ of the a uh, milking animal with the object of drawing off from the animal more milk so like this you can see still today but india predominantly it is almost very it is almost nil in india nobody is practicing but still in the african countries you can see this doom fuka is there but completely in india it is not been stopped in some of the places isolated incidents such kind of doom fuka is been there so they all comes under the cognizable offense so and, and also apart from that the oxytocin is been used oxytocin are been primarily used in the dairy farms so here they the uh, the government of india has under the animal welfare board of india the guidance have been taken and there they have put a restrictions on the sell of the oxytocin so oxytocin earlier was costing only 50 paisa to 1 rupee so the cost of the oxytocin has been increased and it has been come under the scheduled drug that means without the valid prescription of a veterinary doctor you cannot get a oxytocin if at all you get an oxytocin and if a pharmacist sell that oxytocin without the prescription of the doctor then the pharmacist may be uh, for the first offense a 5 lakh rupees fine will be there and in the subsequent offense his license of his pharmacy license may be cancelled so like this stringent measures are been taken so by during this thing for the last 10 15 years the you know, the use of the oxytocin has been minimized it is not that much used now coming to the non cognizable offenses the non cognizable offenses means a uh, police officer without any warrant or without any uh, undertaking from any authority that means it may be a magistrate or uh, without the permission or they have to obtain a prior permission from the magistrate they cannot arrest a person or cannot record the fir so that means the non cognizable offenses are not much serious in nature so the examples that you can see is that simple assault causing hurt or mischief so these are the things that are been under the non cognizable offenses nature of the offense like that what we can see majority of the non cognizable offenses are done on the animals and they are coming under the law like beating kicking overriding overdriving overloading torturing causing unnecessary pain or suffering to any animals these are you can see frequently overloading of the uh, bulls overloading with so called of cartages torturing unnecessary pain these all amounts to the under the prevention of cruelty act 1960 section 111a one should always remember this section because primarily most of the things will most of the minor things or most of the offenses that are been done to the animals they come under the section 111a so that is the topmost one to remember easy one should always remember that the section a a means the first so it is there this section and under the section b here the if the animals that are 
aged old animal or those are suffering from any kind of diseases or those animals which are unfit for productions they are not giving any milk or they are not fit for working so such uh, animals they are being used for any kind of employing any animals such animals to work aged animals putting the aged animals to work or putting the diseased animal to work are putting the weak animals or unfit animals to work so that amounts to cruelty and under the section 11b so prevention of cruelty act it is an offense so also another the section 11c willfully and unreasonably administering any injurious drug or injurious substances any kind of injurious or any kind of drugs uh unfulingly uh, administering here it is a matter of uh, uh controversial and talkable defect is that sometimes some of the persons who are not from the veterinary background they by over the experience they learn like for example the shepherds and the persons who are working in the dairy the labor class people or the d group employees or the the para staff they by they by seeing the treatment sometimes they are not knowing the hazardous effect of the drugs they are not knowing the pharmacology action of the drugs they are unwillingly administering this kind of drugs or injurious drugs to the animals and another is the nature of offense in section violated for carrying the animal subjected to unnecessary pain or sufferings here see this is the two pictures you can see commonly in india one is the poultry birds that are been invertedly carrying in the mat scooters and all those things it is a, it is very a, very common um, scenario in indian rural areas but nowadays in the large scale poultry and all those things urban areas nowadays designated vans are been there but for carrying few birds or few animals this kind of mode of transportation is done which is which subjects to unnecessary pain and suffering for the animals just look at the plight invertedly they are been carrying then also under the section 11e keeping or confining any animals in any cage uh, which doesn't have any specific length and breadth that means in an uncomfortable environment or the animals doesn't have got any opportunity for any kind of movement lack of movement such type of confinement of animal in any cage let's do the violation and in this section 111e there is a non cognizable offense on prior permission it can be uh, arrested then another is the owner neglects or exercise the animals uh, or keep the animal chained look at this animal size is very small and the chain look at the size of the chain which is huge chain is been so that is mount also to the discomfort and pain to the animal so these are all the offenses that are coming under the section 111g then another if the owner of the animal fails to provide animal with sufficient uh, food or sufficient water to drink it also amounts to the section violation or offense under the section 111h here under this non cognizable offense is there then another is that we need without any reasonable cause abandon the animal in circumstances where the animal is suffering from pain or sometimes the animal is suffering from any kind of disease and is not been given any food and it leads to starvation or thirst so that also amounts to the section 111i then under the prevention of cruelty act section j here willfully permitting any animal of which the owner to go to the large at any street while the animal is affected with contagious or infectious diseases here the some of the animals uh, some of the owners they give some blame excuses and they says that their uh, animal they take that animal to the some of the places where the other animals may get infected the the classical examples are the fmd foot and mouth disease prevalent to the animals and other is the lumpy skin disease recently we have seen there had been guidelines has been given under the uh, disaster management act 2005 
so the animals they are not been supposed to move from one place to another they have to be isolated they have to be kept separated from the herd and, and the disease animal uh, has to be taken care and they are not supposed to be abandoned or disbanded on the street then apart from that another sections the nature of offense what we can see is that that offer for sale or without reasonable cause uh, the possession of any animals which is suffering from pain mutilation starvation thirst overcrowding or ill treatment so such is also violation which comes under the prevention of cruelty act under the non cognizable offense then the under the section 11 em solely in view of providing entertainment it confines or causes to be uh, confinement any animals including so that uh, instigating the animals to fight or any bite of a, or or biting that any animal that means to making the animal fight with each other that also amounts to the uh, violation of under the a prevention of cruelty act 111 uh, m now these are the some of the cognizable and non cognizable offenses what we can what we have seen then once the uh, once the uh, fri is been there or the terminology what we have to understand during the jurisprudence or during this thing is that one is the cognizable offense where you can be arrested Uh, without the police warrant, non-cognizable offence, where he has to take it from a magistrate, and then another is the summon. So summon is a legal document that is issued by a court on a person involving in a legal position or uh, proceedings. Sorry, when the legal action is taken against a person, so that means if you have uh, any person is been served a notice, then sometimes you may be called as a witness also. Then such type of on the given date or uh, in the court. the summon is been served to the concerned individual and this the summon has to be obeyed if the summon is not duly served then no action will be taken but if the summon is been served then it is the duty of the individual to go and attend the court and to give um, these verdict or his statement so so that it will ensure a free and fair trial so upon the if some of the persons they try to avoid the summons they in spite of in the house they will try to say that the person is not there sometimes they will say that address is not correct so they will not appear in the court then in that concern one or two notices will be served and it will be taken as a contempt of court and it is punished accordingly so summons whoever whoever is issued it has to be taken very seriously then apart from that oath is also there under the oath the the whatever the after serving the summons when you are presented in the court of law you have to give the oath in that oath in the name of the lord or in the name of the god you have to record the statement in front of the magistrate or judge stating that whatever you are going to tell the truth it, it will be truth only nothing else but truth so now apart from that there are some violations that are been uh, frequently uh, done to uh, under this prevention of cruelty act some of these violations that are which the commonly you see across in the society is that giving an animal any injurious substances are offered food poison somebody wants to get rid of the poor, the, the animals or stray dogs and they feel that they may be caught in the law. so that what they will try to do is that they will try to give some kind of rat poison or any sub poisonous substances in the food and they will try to give it to the animals for example they, this is more commonly done for the dogs and the pigs then transportation of the animals which causing and that is overloading of the cows in the trucks are uh, usually they will try to uh, do the journey in the late night or sometimes they will try to load the animals overcrowdingly and uh, loading and unloading of the animals will be done without ramps sometimes loading and unloading the animal may fall down they may have fracture they may get injured themselves and some of them will carry the animals in their uh, motorcycles or cycles so these all violations are under the section 11 and they are punishable with a fine or an imprisonment then also killing of the homeless animals 
the stray dogs so that are been there previously municipalities used to kill the animals mainly by electrocution starvation or burying alive but after the 1992 uh, it has become illegal so the municipalities are not authorized to kill stray dogs the high courts of delhi rajasthan gujarat mumbai and several other states have specifically forbidden the killing of the stray dogs so uh, the they have directed the municipalities the mahanagar palikas to introduce the animal birth control program and for this thing the budget is been also provided according to the size and population of the dogs the, uh, the abc program is been uh, nowadays it has been successfully adopted in all the municipalities and the the menace of the stray dogs has been controlled to a larger extent now the animal welfare board of india apart from that you see that uh, the failure to follow the this kind of uh, the the laws can invite into the contempt of court proceedings so if somebody is not following the animal welfare board of india's uh, <coughs> guidelines that has been followed in for the municipalities so the UK, the, the common man or any sumoto case can be filed and it can lead to the contempt of court so nowadays most of the almost all the municipalities are abiding the court decisions and they are strictly following the court uh, guidelines and the guidelines issued by the animal welfare board of india from time to time now another is the section of 428 and 429 of the ipc which is very uh, significant here in this you can see that causing injury to an animal a monetary value of greater than 10 rupees means the animal whose value is 10 nowadays almost all the va animals value will be more than 10 rupees so illegally throwing of acids on the cow here this is been done by the vegetable sellers uh, because the animals uh, in the they will go for grazing in the low <coughs> street in in the cities they might quite go for the, um, uh, the go into the bazaars go into the melas or go into the vegetable market where they will the vegetable vendors they are sitting there uh, the animals sometimes they will go and they will eat the vegetables so in some of the places it has been seen that the illegally some to get rid of this thing they have thrown acid on the cows so the the this type of offenses are very serious so it points to a punishment of rupees 2000 and a jail term up to five years and also apart from that injuring the key or killing the dogs cats and cows on the street and also getting up the police stations case filed so these all things are also uh, coming under the section 48 and 429 of the ipc act so punishment of 2000 and a jail term up to five years has been uh, is been provisions under this law then apart from that the animals are not used for research but in some of the incidents the stray animals are being used, but now strictly stray animals may not be used for the research purpose. So the, as the CPCA has also issued guidelines regarding the large animals used as well as the companion animal use in the uh, registered institutes. And so it is illegal for any ma medical student or any kind of commercial research institute to pick up the stray animal from the street or from any kind of municipal and use it for the research purpose then coming to the another thing is that how to help the stray animals the another question comes that if if you see a dog or cow being injured or hit or stoned or make sure you inform the offender of the law and get him or her to stop the animal if the person is harming the animal or beating the cow or beating with the stone or beating with the stick or then you can inform the offender regarding there are some laws for the animals also and you can convince him not to do that but in, if in spite of your convincing if the individual doesn't listen and he starts to abuse that you can go to the nearest police station and can file an fri but never get dejected if the police does not take the case seriously in many a times most of the peoples are not aware of the laws pertaining to animals so they may not take up the cases very seriously so in that case you should have patience 
be polite and firm and you try to insist for an fri in the municipality area if there is a cruelty of uh, is been done or killing of the homeless dog is there then if such type of things have come into the notice then you can take an appointment with the municipal commissioner inform the commissioner that the crewing uh, cruelly killing of the dogs will neither reduce their number or the incidence of the bites or neither will reduce the incidence of the rabies so it is an illegal to cru cruelly kill the stray dogs so <coughs> animal welfare organization in that area can take up the abc animal birth control program or the awareness has to be created among the officials also and among the individuals among the localites regarding the uh, abc program so like this in municipality area the brutal killing of the homeless dogs can also can be prevented in that way we can help these stray animals then even some of the uh, it is illegal for the municipality to uh, catch hold these stray dogs and abandon them outside this city limits sometimes they will see that they the animals that are been roaming here and there they will catch hold all of them they will take up to the uh, some far away places isolated place somewhere near the jungle or forest and they will try to put it so this may likely to cause their starvation and death will be there due to starvation and thirst so such type should be uh, such is illegally and it should also be stopped then when you find that the cows and buffaloes are been moving here and there in the public pavement then in any by person comes to know that this uh, the owner of the person is there then it is you should inform the owner regarding that it is illegal to move the or wander the cows in the public places or in the public pavement and you can infer sometimes uh, most of the times you can see that the owner they may not do it on their own because of they don't have enough space to keep the animal comfortably in their house or they don't have enough feed food to feed them so they will keep the animal roaming in this zone so in such cases you should file a complaint with the municipalities asking the uh, owner that the cows will be sent to a suitable shelter like goshalas panjarpol etc then another is the cows and bullocks that are been left on streets are often hit by cars like accident road accidents are been there or some of the animals they are been uh, they are been eating the plastic bags or other thrash materials the plastic menace is more there nowadays in the cows and especially the the street cows here a lot of things the people they will keep the food items they will cover in the uh, in the in the plastic bags and they will throw in the nearby places so sometimes the cows they will eat it and like that plastic many being a veterinarian we are seeing that so many cases have been filed uh, so sorry sorry so many cases have been come across in the clinics where we have done the ruminatomy in that we have seen up to 10 kg 15 kg 18 kg of plastics they have recovered from the cows so that means the plastic so that's why the the municipalities and the government has taken so many measures and they have banned the plastics so the the some few mm uh, plastics are been there nowadays so it is as a mandatory uh, my sincere request for the the diploma students who are taking the pd pg daw to kindly ensure that the plastic uh, bags are been totally banned so that it uh, the 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 cows or the animals they are eating this plastic bags this kind of that they are not uh, uh, they are uh, they are getting rid of this thing and uh, most of the times if it is been over there sometimes the animal die because of bloat because of the uh, <coughs> the trp cases will be there then if you notice that there are cows or any other animals with burn marks usually such types we will see in case of the fruit and vegetable markets we as we as we have discussed that if any vegetable seller throws acid or any animal to draw away then it is under the prevention of ipc section 428 and 429 you can uh, arrest that person who is doing this thing then apart from that what one can do is that to request all the vegetable vendors 
to work never to do such kind of practices inform the police station in the nearby area to keep an eye uh, out for such kind of violations so particularly this is a common things here acid throwing is not that much common but they will definitely try to beat the animals uh, they will definitely try to make some uh, burn marks on the animals so that the animal gets frightened they may not come to the vegetable markets but this is uh, an offense and all the vegetable vendors should be warned regarding this practice then apart from that when you see that any vehicle animal has been knocked down by any vehicle so one should first check the number of the vehicle then you can see that the animal what kind of the status of the life of the animal is there if the animal is uh, required any immediate uh, medical uh, veterinary assistance it should be moved to the to the safety and provided life saving first aid then take to the veterinary hospital then call the animal welfare organization if ambulance has to be required then the utmost care has to be taken for the treatment of the animal and apart from that the police uh, the animal can be taken uh, to the nearest police station and a case has to be filed against the owner of the vehicle under the section 428 and 429 of the ipc so sometimes hit and run cases will be there most of the people may not get the number of the vehicles sometimes unknowingly in the night area or day day. this is more commonly seen in the early morning scenario when when in the six o'clock seven o'clock or eight o'clock or in the morning five o'clock the the vehicles they are moving in the utmost speed and then knock down the animal so such type of things the number of the vehicle or the identity of the vehicle is not there sometimes cctv cameras are being installed and by that you can check it but most of the time you may not get the number so at that time the animal safety and animal uh, life saving is an important so it should be preferably taken to the animal shelter and at most treatment and precaution care should be taken then apart from that uh, the any research institution is taking any stray animals or any animals uh, for the experimental purpose experimental then the purpose for control of supervision of experiment on animal that is c p c s e a uh, you can file a case with the police regarding those things so today finally we have come to the uh, end of the today's lectures the greatness uh, but by quoting the Mahatma Gandhi words, I can conclude the today's lectures. The greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way its animals are treated. So any, uh, any, any, any laws which are being there prevalent in the society, but it is the morality of the people. They should go, they should protect the animal rights. They should find that the, the animals are also having the equal rights to live in this society. So all these kind of measures that has to be taken regarding these things. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It has been an informative session. Thank you, sir. I will Good first I will, uh, stop this recording and after that we'll have a question-answer session. Okay, sir.